Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. But I'm going to continue on Roots Part 2. And I think you're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it, and we're going to start with Hebrews 12, 14, and 15. We're going to go really, really quick. I'm just going to tap in one thing, and we're going to run. Are you ready to run with me? All right. Are we there? Yes. It says, pursue peace with all people. Does it say with some people? With all people in holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. That's any root of bitterness and springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. It says, Peter, uh, Paul is saying, pursue peace. You and I need to pursue peace. The only root that we should have, and it's just, you know, we know, I, you know, I'm not going to go into the verses, but, but it says that we need to be rooted in Christ Jesus, right? So the fruit that we have, it should be going deeper and deeper and deeper. And the more the, that root of being rooted in Christ, the more we look like him, the more we sound like him, the more we talk like him, the more we think like him. But in life, as I said, we're going to encounter so many things. We're going to encounter disappointments, and you, you name it. We're going to be hurt. You're going to be betrayed. Jesus was betrayed. He, you're not going to go through anything that Jesus didn't go through, right? But the good news is that he paid. He went to the cross for you and I so we don't have to live defeated. defeated. Because it feels, when you're going through something, it feels, you can feel when you're defeated, right? Yeah. And it's real. The struggle is real. But he's saying, however, I want you to believe my word and I want you to catch yourself. I want you to guard your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence because out of it springs the issues of life. What, what, no one's, nothing springs out of, a, out, of a, out of a root, out of a plant. It has, something has to be rooted to spring up, right? Let me show you my plant that I went and bought. I kill every plant, so that's why I don't have plants at home. They're fake. If you come to my house. I try to buy them to, to look real. You know, because sometimes we look real. We look like we look good, right? But we're not good. And so I try to buy fake flowers so they will last for eternity <laughs> until the earth is melted. No, okay, I'm not going to go there. But see, nothing springs up unless it's a tree. And a tree or a plant has a root. And we're going to continue with the root of bitterness. And as I said last week, the root of bitterness comes from hurt, comes from pain. Anger comes from hurt and comes from pain. The seed of bitterness, it's hurt. Remember last Wednesday, I passed a little seed of faith that who lost? Are you here? <laughs> it got lost because this from Israel is so tiny, smaller than the one here on Amer in America. And so everything is a seed. But watch this. The seeds of bitterness can come from intentional. Somebody wants to hurt you and it's intentional and you know it. And even when, the, when someone hurts you intentional, our job, because we are to live in holiness and practice godliness, our job as children of the most high God is to forgive. Isn't that like amazing? Because forgiveness, the word is simple. But it's not easy. It's simple to say if someone does you wrong, what do you do? You go through the Bible and says, forgive. Oh, my God, that's so easy until someone hurts you. All right? That's not so easy. That's the part that when we, when we practice godliness, it could be someone who is unintentional. They didn't mean to hurt you. They just hurt you. They said something hurtful. Or they did something hurtful to you. So, but that can spring up a seed in your heart. It could be imagine. Have you ever imagined something? I'm good at imagining. But now I'm training my mind to imagine good things. Because you can imagine, you have, a, a, you know, you have a conflict, you have an issue with the person. Have you ever imagined your conversation and how you, you know, you're, 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 actually, you're actually confronting them? But you never confront them. It's only in your imagination and in your imagination they told you off and now you get even more upset, right? <laughs> Remember last Wednesday I said a word that I'm not going to repeat today. We get really upset. But it's, and I'm, and, and you imagine it. 
Okay, so now, now you have allowed, or someone tells you, this is what happened to me, so and so did this to me. Now you're imagining, you're, you're picturing what they're telling you, and now I'm like, now I feel for this person, and now that could be a seed go, gone into your heart. Or it could be real, a real hurt, because it does happen. And someone corrected you. Sometimes we get really upset when we're corrected. It hurts us. Uh, someone disciplined you. If someone rebukes you, it reprimands you. It could be at work. It could be anywhere. You teach her. And, and then you, you have that seed because it, it bothered you. It hurt you. They should have never said it. Said it. They should have. You, you start with your own arguments how they should have approached it. But they did. They did. And people are going to come to you. You might not like it, how they're going to correct you, how they reprimand you. But that's not the point. The point is what are you going to do when that happens to you? And that's that you do not allow bitterness. You do not allow that seed to be multiplied into water and to be continually thinking about it. Because that's how a root is, is water. You think about it, and you think about it again, and you think about it again. And then you go at night thinking about it. And then the more you think about it, the more you meditate. The Bible says to meditate on the word of God. And you know what that word meditate means? Chew on it. You literally are swallowing that up. Like if you can't sleep, you know, instead of counting sheep, I count Jesus. Jesus one, Jesus two, <laughs> Jesus three. Well, I go to the shepherd, you know, the sheep are not going to help me. They're, they're going to be bleep, 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 bleep. So, you know, I can't. But Jesus one. Jesus 2, Jesus 3. It, try it. And if not, I go, I plead the blood of Jesus 1. I plead the blood of Jesus 2. You know, you can be creative. Be creative. Because if not, I allow my mind to be thinking of an event, and that event doesn't belong to me anymore. Because I don't live for myself anymore. Oh, I think of a memory that makes me really mad, upset. You know what this means, right? And so what you do, what you do is like, no, when it comes now, I said, those are vain imaginations and this memory doesn't belong to me anymore. I gave it to God and I'm not going to go there. And that's how you start walking in your freedom. Okay, Ephesians 4.26, I think I read it, I'm just going to touch on it. It says, be angry and do not sin. Do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. When we're angry, we can give place to the devil. Another, another in the Amplified, just the second part, he says, and do not give the devil an opportunity. You know that we give him opportunity? Every time, every time we get angry, it's an opportunity either for God or for the devil. And so he says, do not give him, the devil, an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge or nurturing anger or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. Because everything, just like the fruit of the Spirit, right? God has given us the Spirit of God. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. But we have to cultivate the fruit of the Spirit. God gives us a seed here. This is the seed. Now I want you to cultivate love, patience, long suffering. When you think of long suffering, it's like long suffering, right? But those are things that are cultivated. Those are, those are not just things that we pray, Father, we think about it. We always don't pray for patience. Well, pray for patience if you need it. But then be prepared to exercise it because you're going to meet the most annoying people because they're going to train you in exercising and cultivating patience. It's not that you press, Father, thank you so much for patience. And all of a sudden, voila, you're so patient. <laughs> no, the word of God, it needs to be worked out. Right? So I stop asking for patience. I said, Lord, I think I have, I have, I'm in a good grade now. And I'll take my next classes maybe next semester. But, that, but that's what it is. You ask God, Lord, I thank you. I'm, gonna, I'm developing the, the fruit of long suffering. We're prepared to exercise it because that's the only way we develop the character of God that's the only way we develop it and we able to see God Jesus said even in the Beatitudes is that those who have a pure heart will see God you know I, I used to take it very literally like I'm like yeah I know I'm gonna see God when I get to heaven no it means if you are pure in heart that your heart is undefiled because bitterness will undefile your, your, your heart. It will contaminate it, pollute it, stain it. 
And he says, but if you have a pure heart, you will see God. What does it mean? It means that I'm going to be able to see my situation, my temporary trial. I'm going to be able to see it through his eyes. That we, I have made decisions in my life, in my 21 years of beautiful life, right? Of walking in Jesus. It's December. I'm going to have a party. It's December 12th, I think, when we give our lives to Christ. My husband might not mind it, but I am on a party. And it's going to say 21. I have to celebrate, right, that I'm not the same person that I continually grow. But I used to think that it was just like I come to the Lord and I pray for that fruit of the Spirit and voila, I am like a changed woman. No, 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 no. No, I had to be, I had to like, it took me forever. And I'm, and I'm not embarrassing to say that. Some people come to the Lord, they have an encounter with God, and they are transformed day and night, like really quickly. But I was different. I came to the Lord and actually, is, you know, and my spirit was born, born again, but my soul was really twisted. And it took a lot. I had a lot of unforgiveness. I had a lot of bitterness. It took, it took years for me to deal with it. Because remember, when you have bitterness, you can't see, so you blame everybody else. You're like, no, it's not. You're, I'm like this because of you. No, no, no. You're like this because you have chosen to be that way. You have chosen not to take it to God. And we're able to forgive. We're able to walk in mercy. We're able to walk in kindness. Because why? Because we have the spirit of God living inside of us. So all that to say that I believe that tonight you're going to encounter such freedom. And I only have five minutes. Wow. Praise Jesus. So I, I'm going to continue um, next week. Uh, but I'm going to show you something. Remember that I told you that I was going to show you the antidote of how do we, how do we, um, how do we get rid of, bit, of bitterness? And let me give you the scripture. And, uh, and we continue on my next one. Mark 9 verse 50 says, salt is good. But if salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. I really believe, and this is me, as I was praying, the Lord said, you know how you get rid of bitterness? You become salty again. Maybe you lost your saltiness. And the Bible says that when we lose our saltiness, we're good for nothing. And I'm not saying that. That's what the Bible says. You're good for, it says, it to trample. You know why? It's not that God is trampling on you. It's that because you allow, we allow life to trample over us. Because we lost our taste. We are supposed to be the light. We are supposed to be the preservation. And you know that I went and I'm a Googler, right? So I said, what would be a good, a good thing to show? Okay, so this is tonic water. Do you like it? Disgusting. It's bitter. Let me taste it. Oh. It's almost like what they give you for a colonoscopy. <laughs> and I'm serious. I had one, so I can say it. <laughs> this was done at a science place from a university due to the time. I'm not going to go into the details. You can Google it, and it's called. The, 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 <laughs> you guys are still laughing, right? <laughs> the, uh, the title for this, for this um, piece was... Saul trumps bitterness. That's the title. And this was scientists doing it, right? So it's, the taste is nasty. Nasty. So it says that if you get salt, get a good amount of salt. They should put music for me like when you're, in the, uh, when you're shopping. Not in the elevator. I, I see myself shopping. Okay. So it will do that. Because you know what? Salt makes bitterness sweet. Now I'm going to taste it. Do it at home. It's sugar water now. Taste it. You can do it at home. So the more salt you put in, in something that is bitter, the softer it gets. But because this is liquid, it gets. So you would think, he said, be the salt of the earth. 
Why? Because if we lose our flavor, we're good for nothing. You, there is, you, will see, you won't see God because we won't see the way he sees. We're going to walk in bitterness. We can live the rest of our lives like that. Never enter a promised life. Never fulfill the purpose of heaven. And never do what God has called us to do because bitterness has taken root and we don't even know it. You know what? This is pretty good. I can actually drink it. I should call it the Virginia drink. <laughs> well, um, due to time, I have one minute and 20. It's not my time, right? So I want you to consider this, and I'm going to finish this. The sea is full of salt, right? Can you drink uh, the water from the sea? No. But you can make it drinkable. It is only extracted through the process of boiling, removing the water to retain the salt. I don't, I mean, I don't like to, the idea to be going through boiling things. What does it mean, boiling? Because he calls us to be the salt of the earth. And he says, if you lost your flavor, you can get it at any time back. Because that's who we are. It's inside of us. The essence of Jesus Christ is inside of us. And he says, you are the salt of the earth. But if you lost it, it's okay because you can grab it. You can get it again with me. But how do you get salt again? It has to be boiled. It has to be extracted. That means we're going to go through trials and tribulations. Things that are fiery, fiery, fiery. That they're hard. And that's when we usually quit. We usually quit. We usually abandon our calls, abandon families. You abandon your marriage. You abandon your children. You abandon your jobs, whatever. We abandon it because you know what? You're going through something that is so hard. And yet, I'm talking to Christians because he says, you are the salt of the earth. And you're the only antidote for a bitter world that doesn't know me. The things that I'm mad at them. The things that I'm hateful. The things that I came to put them in hell. That's what people think. But he says, you can get it. And how do we get it back? It, that, in order to, for you to recapture again your flavor, because maybe you lost your flavor. And when I'm talking about the flavor, is the saltiness that God has called us to be. To recapture your flavor, the salt in my life, knowing that God is with me, knowing that at any moment I can repent for allowing hurt and for allowing bitterness and through that process you you do not allow Mary talk about Naomi a little bit last last Wednesday she was willing even to change her name because she had allowed things in her life to change who she was Naomi literally means joy and she decided you know she was so she was you can read it in Ruth um Go read the stories, I think about four chapters. But she, people, when she went back, when she went back, Naomi went back to Israel. They said that all the women gathered and they were so excited to see her. Is that Naomi? You're here. Like people were excited. It said, an excitement. It means they were rejoicing to see this woman that had returned. And she said, do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Literally bitter. So she changed her own name. To bitter and if you notice God gives us new names and his names are the bomb Abraham went from Abram to Abraham and he meant I think he meant a father or something like that I'm not don't quote me on that but then he changed it to father of many nations see you're never gonna trade down with God He's never going to change our names. Yeah, I was a scary cat, but now I'm brave in him. Right? I was full of terror, but now I am courageous in him. He's not going to give us a bad name. He's never going to allow you to change that name because we live and he sees us through the blood of Christ. So I encourage you tonight, if you take one thing out of tonight, and we will continue this. But if you take one thing, do not allow... The blows of life do not allow the situations in your life that, that are not even permanent because with God nothing is permanent because there's nothing impossible with Him. So nothing, we should view life 
because our heart is pure we should view life that hey this is just a, a permanent situation and do not allow a permanent situation change your name because many times I have allowed permanent situations and God, God has God changed my name no I changed my name and God said I don't give you permission to change your name when you came to me you have a new name now I take his name I'm married to Christ. I have his name. I have a def someone who defends me. I have an advocate. Now I have someone who can give, give it and report for me if we miss it. Isn't that awesome? It's like with you did that worst, worst thing and then you go to trial and you're there and the devil is present because he's always present. And there is God, the judge. And then you come and, and then you come in like this because we know what we've done. Because it's in that we know what we've done. And, and Jesus is walking with that because he's the advocate. And then devil is coming and he's going to tell your case. Well, let me tell you about Virginia. The most unforgiving, he can go with the, your rap sheet. You know what? She doesn't deserve your love. She doesn't deserve your forgiveness. She doesn't deserve a purpose. She doesn't deserve all that. Then my advocate will speak for me. Jesus will speak for you. He says, excuse me. But this woman has been bought. This woman, everything that she has done in her life, every sin, sin that she has committed, he has been purchased by her father because of what the son did. So if my daughter, this is what God would say. I forgive you, sin no more. That's what he says to us. We already have someone accusing us 24-7. And then we accuse ourselves. But God is not accusing you. God has a plan for you. God loves you. And I'm going to tell you that the only thing that defiles us as Christians is bitterness. It's just one of the roots. But that's, I think, the most powerful root that can come and defile and corrupt us. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.